Yeah, hello and welcome to Kimber Bushcraft. Today I'm in my Kimber camp, uh, my Viking uh, bug out camp, and together with Cornelius. We're going to make an overnighter here. Want to sit with me? Yeah. Oh, oh look at We want to make an overnighter here, and it's actually the first time Cornelius is making an overnighter uh, together with me. Of course, we were in Sweden and Norway and we slept in tents, but uh, this is the first time out in the forest. So I think he's excited too. I'm excited. We are preparing some uh, delicious meal and uh, breakfast too. So I'm looking very much forward to this. Yeah. I got a lot of stuff I would like to show you today. Some new stuff I got. Uh, made myself and so on and yeah it's been a while since i uploaded the video uh, and it's because i have had some holidays together with my family and uh, yeah it's been a wonderful uh, summer this year uh, hot today is not so good it's uh, a little windy and uh, the sun is shining a little bit but that's okay too uh, we had a wonderful trip to uh, norway and sweden first we went to sweden and uh, then we went to Norway and uh, I made a video from the uh, little Viking village uh, Storholmen, I think it's called, in Sweden and I can see it has many views, so uh, I think you like that too. But now uh, a new season is beginning and I'm going to make some uh, more Viking stuff out in the forest, uh, perhaps together with Martin uh, in a week or two. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. But first, I have a little idea for a little carving project and uh, I got some a little thing I would like to show you, a new thing that I uh, partly made. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just lay out here as you can see. Just a moment. Yeah, and this is my little carving pouch I made some years ago. And in here I have my carving tool, a little pencil. Such one that I got from a subscriber in uh, Japan, and of course my hook knife for Mora, a little carving knife for Mora, and uh, then this, yeah, a little axe. I bought the axe set on a Viking market here in uh, Lindholm Hoyle in Aalborg, and I made this for it. I put a handle on, and today I'm going to use it when I'm making my little carving project. And you see why I think this is a good little tool. Another little carving knife. And then for this one. Yeah. I got me a little saw. And I want to tell you a little bit more about this saw. Sometimes I get comments that uh, the Viking didn't use saw and uh, yeah, there's not many findings of uh, uh, saws in, from the Viking age. But uh, you can see on this picture, uh, it's a finding in Sweden and Gotland, uh, the Mester Muir chest. It was a chest that was found uh, and in that chest there was a lot of tools among them, among them uh, a little saw and um, yeah. This little saw is uh, a replica of that um, and I, I was on a Viking market uh, last weekend in Aarhus, a Moscow Viking market, a uh, really nice little thing but I haven't uh, filmed anything for that because uh, it looks very much like uh, the Viking market I was on in Lindholm Hoy. But there I met a friendly guy. A blacksmith and, and his name is Lars Merck and he has a, a, a little business where he makes things uh, knives and axe heads and so on and also uh, some saw and uh, yeah but this is a special one uh, because this is a, a pull saw uh, like the silky saw you have to uh, saw like this you have to pull it uh, normally it's a push you push a saw uh, and I think uh, the one that was found in, in Sweden, Gotland, uh, was a push saw, but 
he would try to make uh, something a little bit different and uh, I got this blade from him uh, to a special price to see if it's okay for um, sawing small items. Uh, I must admit I have taken a little bit of the uh, saw blade off uh, because it was very long and it's very thin so I thought uh, the shorter the blade is uh, the less risk is that it will uh, break or wobble so and uh, now it's very sturdy and I just put this handle on it's actually uh, pine with a little um, rope on and um, yeah I think it's cool and uh, I promise to uh, give him feedback on uh, how it works so um, now I'm going to use this for the first time in my little carving project that I planned to do here on this old lighter. Yeah, a couple of months ago I came across a company uh, that makes these salt the common is called Nordur, Nordur, I think it's Icelandic, and uh, yeah, they're producing uh, salt uh, in the old-fashioned way um, since I think it's 750 about there. Uh, they started to produce salt uh, in this way, and it's the seawater they come up in some big um, pans and then they um, boil them or warm it up uh, over the uh, hot springs that is on Iceland yeah so this is uh, CO2 no, neutral uh, they don't use any electricity or uh, fuel to make this product as you can see in this picture they have uh, six different kind of uh, salt. The company Nordur that uh, produces these salts is an uh, ordinary sea salt, uh, blueberry sea salt, lava sea salt, smoked sea salt, licorice sea salt and seaweed sea salt. Today I have brought blueberry and lava and smoked and um, these two I will try on my uh, meat, my meat these two I'll try on my meat and this on the vegetable I'm going to uh, prepare together with my meat. I tasted it and it's very delicious, uh, very special. But today I'll uh, tell you how it tastes on, uh, on food. I only tried it uh, from the package. You can see here uh, it is red or blue uh, from the blueberries. and. Uh, this is black, lava, sea salt, and uh, smoked sea salt, yeah, it's just a little bit brown. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm very grateful for... Hello, Cornelius. <laughs> what? Are you interested in this too? Yeah. I'm very grateful uh, that Nordu will send me these samples so I can test them out. And uh, they had some uh, great stories about uh, this sea salt and uh, I put a link to their website so you can find the stories about behind these products. Uh, it is English and um, you can understand it if you can understand English. So go in and check them out and I think they are selling this product uh, worldwide. Um, yeah, I hope so because uh, if you're interested in different taste of uh, salt you should try these now I'm going to uh, make my fire and uh, go ahead with my meal
Yeah, so this is my meal. Beans, uh, carrots, onion, and a steak. And I think I'll cut it out in pieces. And the last one. Yeah, so delicious. Oh, and then the salt. I'll take this blueberry salt and put it on my vegetables. Do it like this. Yep. And the smoked salt. I'll put on half of the half of the meat. This portion. Yep. And uh, then lava. Lava salt. Salt. Yep. On the wrist. It sure does look like lava, this salt. Yeah. And, uh, well, let's take a bite. Mmm. Special taste. I like it. Mmm. Mm. Mm. No onions for you, Cornelius. Oh, but a little piece of this. Yeah. Tasty. Mm. That's cool. Mm. It's cold. Ah, this is nice. The smoked salt is very nice, but the lava, yeah, it's difficult to explain how it tastes, but it's very burnt, tastes like fire, not strong, but Like charcoal or something like that. And the vegetables have a little sweetness because of the blueberry salt. Yeah.
Yeah, and, uh, as you maybe have noticed, I took the armrest off, and uh, it's because when I have my couch on and my CX, I can't sit here uh, comfortably uh, when this uh, armrest is here. So I cut them off, and uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, it's still nice to sit in, and uh, now the fur will uh, fill out the, sh the chair uh, nicely. So I think it's okay. Yeah. School everyone. Hope you have had a, a nice summer here. It's the last summer month we are going. Uh, in now, August. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I told you before I went on the journey to uh, Sweden that we are going to visit Gotland and Birka. And uh, unfortunately we didn't do that. And the reason is, well, uh, Gotland is actually far away from Sweden. So we had to sail there and uh, it was too expensive. Uh, the cost was more than we had to pay from Denmark to Sweden. So, uh, yeah, perhaps another time. Uh, but this year uh, we said no and we went to Norway instead. And also Birke. We tried to reach Birke. We drove down uh, to the lakes where the little island is located and um, saw, was looking for a ferry. And we asked some people uh, if there was ferry to this little island where Beaker is, but they said that it must be in Stockholm. You have to uh, arrive there early in the morning and take a special ferry to the little island and back again in the afternoon. And again, it was very expensive, and yeah, we had to uh, we had to arrive uh, early in Stockholm. That was a problem because the uh, campsite was far away from Stockholm. So <clears throat> we decided not to do that and uh, I've seen pictures and uh, videos from Birke and uh, yeah, it's not something special, uh, not the island. There's a lot of findings from Birke uh, that are uh, displayed in the uh, National Museum in Stockholm. We didn't uh, visit that because of Cornelius. We have him with us. So yeah, but we uh, visit uh, Storholmen a uh, nice little Viking village. I uh, made a video about that and I'm going to make a video about uh, uh, our journey to uh, Norway and Sweden later this year. I have some footage from that. But uh, perhaps Birke another time and uh, Gotland. Yeah. But nevertheless it was a nice uh, vacation and we enjoyed it very much. Yeah, it's getting dark now, a little bit. I will light up my lanterns and uh, put some water over my coffee. Mm. Yeah, let's do that. some uh, Nordu flakes salt in.
Notice that Cornelius is. I have uh, cut his hair. Yeah. It was too warm for him here this summer. So, uh, together with my daughter, uh, we trimmed him with a scissor and a machine. And it looks very nice now.
yeah, it's time to go to bed now. I think it's about half past ten. It's getting really dark now. I'm just going to lay on the the sheep fur and my reindeer fur and uh, with a wool blanket. Uh, I'm sure there will be enough protection. Uh, it could be cold during the night, but I don't think it's going to be that cold. So, um, hope you enjoyed this video until now, and then I see you again in the morning. Good night. Good morning everyone, it's been a quiet night, the news was uh, sleeping most of the time, we were up around 3 o'clock, uh, he had to do his thing and I did the same. Now we are going to, um, to make some breakfast and I'll do it inside here because they say that will come rain here this morning. I'm not sure, I can see the sky is blue, a little bit blue, but I felt a couple of drips before, so I think it's most convenient to make it inside the shelter. And uh, I'm sure Paneers will like this meal too. So now I will light up the, the fire there.
a little bit. Looking delicious, I think. Cornelius! Stop doing that. Uh, again. As soon as you hear a, a sound of something he doesn't recognize, then he begins to bark. But luckily he didn't uh, bark during the night. But now, Cornelius, come here. Can I speak? A little treat, perhaps? Yeah, let's go. Mmm. That was nice. Then hopefully we can be quiet. A little moment. Yep. And I can start eating this. Mmm. And um, I don't come whiskey in my coffee in the morning. Yeah.
Now the sun is shining. Yeah, it turned out to be a wonderful morning here at Kimber Camp. No wind and the sun is shining now. So uh, I'll stay here for a couple of hours and I pack my gear, our gear, and then we are heading home. So I can edit this video and uh, hopefully launch it sometime before the weekend or Saturday. Yeah. I hope you enjoy your little stay together with Cornelius and me here. And, uh, and find my uh, little project interesting. Yeah. And then I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye bye. Take care.